And since we arrived, we keep hearing about a woman who lost three members of her family, almost lost four. David Muir, as we said, traveled through the hills to find her. Yeah, we should mention, Diane, that when you and I arrived at the midnight hour last night, we found out to hospitals and churches at opposite ends of the coal mine here. And today we learned that as authorities in those early morning hours reported the death toll continuing to rise behind every one of those numbers, a story of immeasurable loss. The magnitude of this disaster is still so hard to grasp even for the proud people who know all too well the dangers of the mines here. Today, the governor spoke of the coal miners they've been able to identify, and we were struck by something he said. We have 11 miners that we've been able to identify and tell their families. Of those 11, three miners were in one family. Three members from one family, a husband and his two young nephews who will never come home. Late today, we traveled the same route he so often took, that hour and a half ride through the mountain. We found his wife, Diana Davis, carrying so much heartache. He loved to work, and he worked for me and these kids. And we just miss him, and we love him so much. So you lost three people in the mine? Mm-hmm. Yes, at one time. They were so young. And so is her son, who came very close to being the fourth family member she lost, entering the mine just as the explosion hit, black dust covering his face. Late today telling us it's not fair he got out, but not his father. He should have been here with me today. That kind of pain is what we found from the moment we arrived here before the sun came up. Richard Scarbo had just learned he'd lost a dear friend. And when you heard the numbers overnight here of just how many he lost, there's no answer for it. There's no answer. The death toll rose so quickly, the newspaper delivered before dawn already outdated. And inside this small church, a lone woman from the Red Cross broke the news. 25 coal miners were lost. I think that's when hope fell apart. Today, everywhere you looked, prayers for the miners. Benny Willingham was just 62, set to retire in just a few weeks on his 63rd birthday. He dedicated his life to the Lord and his family. And he loved the coal mine. And one of the other things I learned about Benny today was that in addition to that retirement, just a few weeks off on his 63rd birthday, he'd also planned his first cruise ever with his wife. So many of these families were willing to talk to us today, Diane, because they want their hardworking coal miners remembered.